video we're going to replace this tap on this basin with a grow tap which is a much better quality of tap. I actually bought this on eBay a few months ago, I can't remember how much I paid for it. I will put the price on the screen. So Grow have a very good reputation of making quality products. They are a German company I believe, but this is actually made in Thailand. But the quality on it does look very good. It's a bit different than normal taps that you would purchase in the UK as the tails are already inserted into the tap and they will actually swivel around which is a good thing because it means that it is more difficult to kink them when you are installing them. So basically the tap goes on like that. On the left hand side is the hot and on the right hand side is the cold. These are not standard fittings for the UK. I do believe they are actually a 3.8 fitting. So it is very likely that the tap that you are replacing will have a different size fitting than that. So as you can see, it's a very nice item that, very well made. And at the back there, we've got the hole. And that is for that part, which activates the pop-up waste. That is actually made from stainless steel and you can actually bend that quite easily. And some of these are actually chrome plated, so they're probably made from brass or something, which is easier to bend, but there's a chance that the chrome plating will crack off when you're trying to bend it. So a stainless steel one will not suffer from that problem. The kit also comes with a pop-up waste if you're installing the basin from new. We've already got that installed, so we're just replacing the tap in this video. You then get a packet that has the horseshoe washer in it. You have an O-ring and the nut to tighten it in place. So when we come to fit the tap, we're gonna need something for the tails to connect to, which I've said are already 3.8 BSP. So I bought some special isolation valves. So it's 15 mil compression on that end, and on that end we have a flat face, which is 3.8 BSP. So we're probably gonna use that. If you already have an isolation valve fitted under the sink, this doesn't actually have one fitted, you can get these tap tail adapters. So that is 15 mil. And at the end there we have a 3.8 BSP fitting again with a flat face. So you can pop that straight into a traditional isolation valve with the olive, tighten the nut up, screw your new tail directly onto that. So we have two options there for connecting a tap with 3.8 tails. You also get a set of instructions with this, obviously. So this is the tap that we're replacing, and this one's a little bit tarnished. The chrome started to come off. It's probably 20 or 30 years old. I did actually replace the cartridge in this quite a few years back, and as you can see, the tap is not dripping, so the cartridge exchange worked really well. See that we've got full mains pressure on that tap. So the first thing we need to do is isolate the water. And in this property we have a combination boiler, so it's very simple, we just need to close the main incoming stop tap. And once that's fully closed, I'm then gonna open a downstairs tap, and that will drain out any water from the system. So the water's now been isolated. If we operate the tap, you can see that nothing at all is coming out of there. So if you look just there, you can see the slotted screw and that is holding that metal bar on. So we need to put a screwdriver in there and undo that. Now we've got that loose, we can actually pull that out once we remove the tap. So that one is the hot, obviously, and that one is the cold. So we now need to undo the two flexes that are on there. And if you look at the flexes, they are not in brilliant condition. So I'm just gonna take some water pump pliers. I'm gonna grab that part. I'm gonna take the adjustable. And I'm gonna undo the nut on the flexi. And I'll just 
switch the torch on there, might get the light a bit better. So basically, we're undoing that nut. And then we just need to do the same on the cold. Now if we look up the back there, right up there, there's actually a nut that we need to undo. And there is quite a lot of corrosion and rust up there. So a good thing to reach these with is a box spanner or a box wrench like that. And that's actually an 11 millimeter nut on there. A good way to use a box spanner is to get a socket that fits on the other end. It's a good fit. And then we can simply use a ratchet like that. And we can use that to undo the nut. So it is a bit difficult to film this. I'm now going to put the box spanner back on. A lot of the times you can't even see what you're doing, you're just feeling for the bits. Once that's loose we can remove the ratchet and we can just unscrew that by hand. And that's what's going on up there. You can see that I've got the wrench on and that I'm undoing the nut. You can see that we've got the nut off there now. So the washer is very badly corroded. As you can see. So I can now grab hold of the tap and we can carefully pull that out. And those flexes are actually in very bad condition. There's actually uh, some very sharp bits on there. And if you look at the top there, you can see the corrosion. So it's probably a really good uh, time to be changing this tap before we have a flood on our hands. And now we just need to give everything a clean. So I'm just going to use some uh, white vinegar. This would be an ideal time to redo the silicone at the back there, but I'll probably cover that in another video. So I'm now going to take this spanner, which is specifically designed for compression fittings. I'm going to grab the nut on the compression fitting there, put the adjustable on the inside part, and then I'm going to undo that. Obviously that is the wrong size for the taps that were fitting. So that is a flat faced connector. But unfortunately it's not the correct size. We need a 3 8 one that is a half inch. So I'm just going to remove the other one. So we're now left with the two pipes with the compression nuts and the olives. And these are the new compression fittings that we've got, which are 15mm compression and 3 8 flat face on that side. So obviously they can only go on one way. We're just going to take the old fitting and make sure that the new nut fits on there, which it should do because they are pretty much standard. So that is good. That means that we can screw that directly onto the original nut and the existing olive. And if we look at the olives at the back there, they are in pretty good condition. One of them's, or oh, they're actually both brass, which I'm not really keen on. Brass uh, olives aren't as good as copper because they don't compress as much because they're not as ductile. We should just be able to tighten that up 
and it shouldn't leak. If it does leak, we're going to have to put some PTFE tape around the olive. Now this time we can't actually use the special spanner, which is actually a 24mm by the way. We can't get that in there because we've not got enough room to turn it. So we need the isolation valve so that it's facing this way. So I'm going to use the water pump pliers to grip that. And then I'm going to tighten the compression nut using an adjustable spanner. And it is important that we get these tight because we don't want them to leak. I'm not going to do exactly the same with the cold water isolation valve. I'm just going to put that on there and tighten up the nut. So I've turned off both isolation valves and I've been and switched the water back on. And as you can see, there is no leaks at all on that. Now, if that was leaking, you can simply wrap some PTFE tape around the olive and retighten it and that will stop it. When you're opening the stop tap, you only want to open it a tiny amount just to let the water fill the pipes back up. You don't want to open it to full bore. So I'll just prove to you that the water is back on. You have to watch out because we do have very high water pressure in this house. You can see that that is wet so we've obviously got water back onto that valve. So we're now going to concentrate on fitting the tap back onto the basin. That screw is already installed. On some taps you do have to screw that in yourself. So we have a o-ring that needs feeding over the tails. Once we get this into position, and we push that through the basin from the underside, we then need to push the horseshoe washer and that will go onto that screw. And then once you've done that, you then tighten it up using that nut. So it is important when you put that on that you get it the correct way with the rubber going towards the basin. And we're just going to push the two tails through the hole. So I'm actually going to push the lever that operates the pop-up waste through there because we might have difficulty getting that in because of the shelf. I'm then going to hold the tap from above, put that on from below and tighten up the nut using the box wrench or the box spanner. So I can now take the box spanner and we can just tighten that up. So that is now nice and tight and that is not going to come loose. So I've made sure that I've got the hot on the left and the cold on the right. When you're fitting flexi tails you need to ensure that they're not kinked in any way or twisted. These are a little bit long. But there is plenty of room so we have got an almost straight curve going up there which is absolutely fine. What you don't want to do is have them taut like a bowstring. You don't want some stretching and you don't want them to be too long. If you get too much of a kink in them they will not work. So we now just need to screw that onto there. making sure that you don't cross thread it. And the nuts on these are actually 19 mil, so I can actually use a 19 mil open-ended spanner for this. So we just need to nip that nut up. We don't need to go mad. And once it starts getting tight, like so, we're just gonna take a pair of water pump pliers and we're just gonna grip the isolation valve. And that is actually getting tight now. 
and obviously you don't want to go mad because you're just going to be cutting into the rubber. The beauty of the tails on these is that they actually swivel. So unlike other tap tails that can kink, these aren't likely to do that. So we now just need to do the same for the cold. I'm not really happy about the cold, but it's exactly the same as the one that came off and that was okay for 20 or 30 years, so it should be okay. But at some point I'm going to redo this bathroom anyway, but uh, ideally that would be further to that side and then you wouldn't have the bit of the bend in the flexi there, but it will still be fine. So again, I'm going to grip the isolation valve and I'm going to tighten up the nut. The only thing we need to do now is connect up that part, which is for the pop-up waste. That will obviously need bending, but it's very difficult filming this, so I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to do the actual plumbing part of the tap install. So we can now take a screwdriver, we can slowly undo the isolation valves. And we'll open those fully. Obviously we can see there's no leaks. I'll do the same with the hot. And then we're going to slowly open the tap because there will be air in there, obviously. You can see that that is working perfectly. And what I'll do is once we've got the air out of the system, you can see that we've got some air in that side. I'll then open the stop tap to where it should be. I will put some links in the description to other taps that I've changed as they may be useful for you. You now just need to keep an eye on this and make sure it's not leaking. If you want to check a good way is to get a piece of tissue and just wrap that around each pipe. And if there's any leak on there at all, any water gets on that, it'll immediately saturate the tissue and you'll know that you've got a leak. But apart from that, that's pretty much it. It's quite a, an easy job, providing everything goes okay and you don't need to alter the pipe work. You could probably change a tap like that in about 20 minutes, half an hour, providing everything goes to plan. If something doesn't go to plan, it could take a couple of hours.